Welcome to this time of worship on this Reformation Sunday. Uh, the sanctuary, the up here near the altar, we are decked out in red this morning as red is the color of the Holy Spirit. And we celebrate today the continued reformation of the church, the work that the Holy Spirit does in reforming the church today. Uh, we also continue our theme, our stewardship theme uh, for this year, Join the Story. So uh, you have in your insert, your bulletin insert, we are looking at stories of joy today and collecting those stories. And I just have to say, you can read it a little bit in here too, but I still, uh, when we started redevelopment, who knew that joy was going to be this immediate byproduct to the, the redevelopment work that we were doing way back? back in 2018, and that joy continues to be our top value, abundant joy, no less. And this is the little definition that we put with that value. We believe faith can be fun, right? What an awesome gift. We laugh in worship. We enjoy each other's company. What a gift to be part of a community where we enjoy each other's company. We are silly at times. Uh-huh and serious at times. And I do love the last line, we love to eat. <laughs> Amen, church? Amen. Amen. I know. So uh, we know that there are stories of joy all over this community, both in person and online. And welcome to you all on Zoom this morning as well. Pastor Terry Elton is your host in that space. And we would love to collect and know about where you find joy 
in this community of Lutheran Church of Peace. So this week you have colored index cards because joy is colorful, right? And so if you would share with us where you find joy at Lutheran Church of Peace, uh, we are going to put those up on the wall with the stories that you shared with us about where you find community at Lutheran Church of Peace. Uh, we would love to just continue to invite you to join this story and add your story to all the stories of LCP. Good. With all those prayers on our hearts, let us stand and join together in worshiping our God. <coughs> We do worship this morning and always in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our gathering hymn is the hymn of reformation, a mighty fortress is our God, number 504. Trusting in God's mercy, let us take a moment now to make our confession before God and before one another. Holy God, at times we feel so frail and fragile, getting blown about by the latest crisis, bad news, our own short tempers and failings. You call us to hold fast to what is good, but so often we flounder, unable to find that solid thing that will center us again. Help us to see you as our center and to cling to the good that you create in the world. Forgive us and shape us into Christ-likeness, that we might bear his love and truth to the world. We pray in his name. Amen. Amen. 
In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all of our sin. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Let us pray. Almighty and gracious Lord, we thank you that your Holy Spirit renews the church in every age. We ask today that you would be in your church in all places, in all parts of the globe. Where she is corrupt, purify her. Where she is in error, direct her. Where in anything she is amiss, reform her. Where she is right, strengthen her. Where she is in need, provide for her. Where she is divided, reunite her. Lord, we lift to you and ask that the winds of your Holy Spirit would blow through this community of faith today and always for the sake of your Son, Jesus, the living Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Now may the peace of Christ be with you always. Let us take a moment to share that peace with one another. Peace to all on Zoom. Peace. The reading today is from King, uh, 1 Kings, the 8th chapter. The priest then brought the Ark of the Lord's Covenant to its place in the inner sanctuary of the temple, the most holy place, and put it beneath the wings of the cherubim. The cherubim spread their wings over the place of the Ark and overshadowed the Ark and its carrying poles. These poles were so long that their ends could be seen from the holy place in front of the inner sanctuary, but not from outside the holy place and they are still there today. There was nothing in the ark except two stone tablets that Moses had placed in it at Horeb, where the Lord made a covenant with Israel, Israelites after they came out of Egypt. When the priests withdrew from the holy place, the cloud filled the temple of the Lord, and the priests could not perform their service because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the temple. Then King Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in front of the whole assembly of Israel, spread out his hands toward heaven and said, Lord, the God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven above or on earth below. You who keep your covenant of love with your servants, who continue wholeheartedly in your way. You have kept your promise to your servant David, my father. With your mouth you have promised, and with your hand you have fulfilled it. But will God really dwell on earth? The heavens, even the highest heaven, cannot contain you. How much less this temple I have built. Yet give attention to your servant's prayer and my plea for mercy, Lord my God. Hear the cry and the prayer that your servant is praying in your presence this day. May your eyes be open toward this temple night and day. This place of which you said, my name shall be there, so that you will hear the prayer your servant prays toward this place. Hear the supplication of your servant and of your people Israel when they pray toward this place. Hear from heaven, your dwelling place, and when you hear, forgive. Word of God, word of life. All right, I'd like to invite the children up.
friends can have a seat, we'll start with that. And while we're waiting for everybody to come on in, I want to say my joy. Um, when Liz started, where'd she go? Okay. <laughs> uh, when Liz started, there were many weeks during children's message, I'd be like, oh, sorry, there's no kids. We had 12 children downstairs this morning. Uh, <laughs> Where are my uh, people that are supposed to be doing the singing? Where'd they go? Oh, right there. <laughs> I was like, you moved from where you were sitting. So Beth and her lovely assistant, Sue, work with our younger kids. So Annalise, who's two, two and a half, two, two, um, two are third graders. And then I have the bridging kids, so our fifth through seventh grade kids. They will be in confirmation next year. Um, so this, this is our crew, and some things that bring us joy um, is singing. So we are going to sing a song for you, and then we're going to teach it to you. Um, because I am not the singer of the group, that'll be best role. <laughs> so let's stand up, and we're gonna sing the song for everybody else. By the way, this song has been requested every single week, so it is definitely a favorite with our younger kids. Also, Liz, Danielle said you have stinky feet. <laughs> I thought that was going to be related to the rest. this song makes us so joyful, we would like to spread the joy to you, ev everybody else. So everybody stand up. We're going to start with our waves. And the first words are, in the beginning, God made the seas. So you can repeat that. And the forest filled with trees. God made the mountains up so high. Above it all, he placed the sky. God's fingerprints are everywhere. Just to show how much he cares. And in the middle, God had some fun. He made a hippo and it weighed a ton. Hip, hip, hippopotamus. Hip, hip, hippopotamus. And because hippos are so big, we use a tiny voice for everything else. Hip, hip, hooray, God made all of us. <laughs> hip, hip, hippopotamus. Hip, hip, hippopotamus. Hip, hip, hooray, God made all of us. <laughs> all right, we can try singing it all together. <laughs> No, I guess I wanted to that. But Annalise, can you show us your hippo one more time? Show me the hippo. 
Okay, somebody might have gotten a video. We might have to put that online. It was very cute. <laughs> All right, well, friends, let's do a quick prayer and then we can go back to our seats. Dear God, thank you for bringing us our friends. And all of the joy we have here at LCP. Let us spread that joy when we leave. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, I'm not exactly sure how to follow that. <laughs> I feel like we should just say amen and march on out, right? That was awesome. Thank you. Thank you, kids. Whew, so last week we talked a little bit about King David and how he wanted to be the one uh, to build God's temple in Jerusalem. And God said, well, nope, nope, you're not going to build it. Your son Solomon is going to build it. Well, today we heard about the temple that King Solomon built. The original temple in Jerusalem, it was one of the most mad majestic buildings ever to be built. And amazingly, for the day, it only took seven years, even though it was 180 feet long, 90 feet wide, and 50 feet high. And actually, the highest point in the building was 20 stories, or 207 feet high. Uh, King Solomon used only the finest materials. The foundation was laid with hewn stone. Think about doing that in that day, right? The walls were formed from the great cedars of Lebanon. The floors were planks of juniper and the doors were olive and cypress. And carved into the, the cedars of Lebanon in the walls were these extraordinary visions of vines and palms and cherubim and flowers done by the most expert artists in the area. And to finish it off, Solomon had the entire interior of the temple, nope, oh, nope, doesn't work, inlaid with gold. Can you imagine? This is looking down the hall towards the Holy of Holies. You can see the cherubim standing over and protecting and guarding the ark. And to complete this massive project, Solomon imposed forced labor on all of his subjects, drafting people for work shifts that sometimes lasted up to a month there were 3,300 officials that were appointed to oversee the temple project, and Solomon went into so much debt in this project that he had to pay off King Hiram in the north by giving him 20 cities <laughs> in Galilee. Can you imagine that? And when all was ready, Solomon brought the Ark of the Covenant, which had been traveling with the people in the tabernacle, the tent of meeting, where God's glory would come and dwell in the cloud. And he installed the ark into the newly finished temple, into the innermost sanctuary, into the holy of holies, under the wings of the cherubim that stretched from one side of the room to the other. And as soon as the priests placed the ark in its place, the cloud of God's presence filled the temple to overflowing, and God's glory was so great they had to vacate the building, and they couldn't do anything that they were wanting to do in that space with God's presence there. This is the same cloud that had led the people out of slavery in Egypt, had protected them from the Egyptian army, the same cloud that descended on Mount Sinai when God gifted the people with God's covenant and the ten stone tablets that sit in the ark, the same cloud that would settle on that tabernacle, the tent of dwelling, that movable sanctuary, God's presence with them in their wilderness wanderings. And now that same cloud, that same presence filled the temple with God's glory and God's presence, taking up once again and always the center and the heart of that community. And King Solomon, known as the wise king, threw his hands toward heaven and eventually ended up on his knees, which I'm not going to do because I wouldn't be able to get up, <laughs> as he prayed a prayer of dedication 
over the temple. And he prayed, as we often pray here, that God would continue to keep God's promises, that God's eyes would be open to the temple and the community that gathered there, that God would hear the prayers of the king, but not only of the king, but of any Israelite and foreigner alike who would offer their prayers aimed at the temple, at God's holy presence. And then Solomon asked this incredible question. After building a set space, a magnificent set space for God to dwell, Solomon asked, but will God really dwell on earth? But will God really dwell on earth? He's naming this tendency that we have as humans to to want to know how everything fits, right? I do. I, I love puzzles. And I'm never happier than when I get it all done, right? And I know everything fits. And so we, like King David and King Solomon, we want to know where God fits, and we want to have this defined space for God, which isn't a bad thing in and of itself, is it? In fact, God promises certain spaces and places where we can know we will run into God's presence, places like this beautiful sanctuary, God's word, the sacraments of baptism and holy communion. God gifts us these spaces and these moments so that we have them to run to when we are seeking God. They are visible signs of God's invisible grace. The problem comes when we leave God in these spaces and in these moments, right? When we stop looking for God or remembering that God is with us in all spaces and moments. It can be very easy sometimes to just leave God at church on Sundays, can't it? I know it can be for me sometimes, right? We're here, and it's amazing and wonderful, and God is so very present, and we walk out the door, and we get in the car, and... Right? (laughs) It's my best explanation. (laughs) All of a sudden, where's... Right? We leave God in the building. It can be easy to do that. It can be easy to become an insular community, We start to lean more towards country club-like membership and less like people with a mission to spread the good news, right? I know churches that have put on the doors inside the sanctuary, your mission starts now, right, or something like that, knowing that we are here to be filled with the presence of the Holy Spirit and then sent out of the doors to take God's presence with us into the world. The heavens, even the highest heaven, cannot contain you, Solomon admits. How much less this temple that I have built. As we celebrate the Reformation of 1517 and the incredible way in which God reshaped God's church in that time, right, really broke it open so that the people heard God's word in their own language. The sacraments were open to all people. Word and sacrament becoming the central movement of our worship still today. As we celebrate that reformation, we look for God's continuing reformation, right? Reshaping, redirecting of God's church in this time and place. And we celebrate it. We celebrate it because God's reforming and reshaping means we are always being stretched into a new image of God that we can take with us. Will God really dwell on earth, Solomon asked. And indeed, we know God did in the person of the living Jesus Christ. John 1.14 says, The Word became flesh and made God's dwelling literally tabernacled among us. Jesus becomes the living, walking, talking, breathing, tabernacle temple of God among us. 
And since the breath of the Holy Spirit landed at Pentecost, we are now God's dwelling place, God's tabernacle in the world. 1 Corinthians 6.19 declares boldly that our very bodies are temples for the Holy Spirit to dwell. Think about that. Every breath that you take, every smile that you share is the Holy Spirit dwelling within you and shining out to those around you. God's Spirit chooses our hearts <laughs> over a building, no matter how ornate, for a residence. And as you walk around each day and encounter various people you are bumping into and rubbing elbows with temples of that same Holy Spirit, whether you are in the grocery line, checkout line, whether you are walking in the park, doing dishes at home, and when we gather here, we sink into God's word for us. We come to God's table that we might be reformed again and again and again in big and small ways into God's image so that we might carry that image as temples of the Holy Spirit out into the world. We have known God's reformation and redevelopment here at Lutheran Church of Peace in some deep and big ways. But we have most often thought about that in regards to the church, right? The building, the programs, the ins and outs of worship life, the stuff of church. But if we are, in fact, the temple of God's presence and not merely this beautiful space, then the real question as we move through redevelopment is not how is the church doing, but how is the temple of your heart doing? How is the temple of your heart doing? What, what reforming work is God up to in that space in these days? Is God healing something? A wound or a grief? Let God hold you and fill you with God's comfort and God's peace? Is God calling something out? Holding you accountable about some habit or grudge or regret, right? Let God work in your heart and bring you to a new day. Is there something you are needing to let go of? Something you need to pick up or tend to? Allow God to fill you with courage and wisdom. And don't worry about comparing your temple to the temple that is sitting next to you this morning. We should all have a caution, road work ahead sign on our foreheads, right? So we're reminded to be gentle with those around us and with ourselves. We are no gold laminated edifice <laughs> we are always a work in progress and that is just what we are supposed to be and nothing more as solomon and the whole community of israel dedicated the temple in jerusalem the glory of the lord filled the temple so completely they had to stop their worship and vacate the premises to get out of god's way may we be so filled this sanctuary this building but most importantly the temple of your hearts filled to overflowing with god's grace and goodness and mercy and forgiveness for having gathered to lift our prayers to connect again with god's word and god's ways for having sung god's praises in such a way that we are stopped in our tracks as God's glory flows through us. That is the joy. That is the deep joy that this place continues to seek out and connect to and be filled with. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.
Oh, no. Here's my addition. Please stand and join me in the statement of belief. <coughs> we are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Filled with the Holy Spirit, we join with the church in every place, praying for the world that God so loves. Let us pray. God, whose glory fills every molecule of space within and around us, 
We stand in awe to think that you would choose to dwell within our sometimes brave and sometimes fragile hearts. Speak into that space today with your words of comfort, healing, and peace. Fill us with your deep joy for this life you've given us to live together as your people. Lord, in your mercy. <laughs> Creator God, the earth groans as the scars we leave on her in our carelessness bring about rupture for so many around the globe. We pray especially for Asheville, North Carolina today as they continue to suffer from the destruction of Hurricane Helene. Fill them with your hope and strength as they dig through the rubble and begin to rebuild. Lord, in your mercy. God of the nations, in the days left of preparing for a national election, we ask for your protection as we vote for a new president and for state and local officials. Give us your wisdom and your compassion as we speak with neighbors, friends, and family members around the election. Help us to listen deeply for their fears and excitement around candidates and policies. Lead us into a more hopeful day together. Lord, in your mercy. Healer God, we lift to you all who hurt today, all who struggle, all who are weary and carrying heavy burdens. We remember especially those closest to our community with hurts, fears, and sorrows. Neil, Rick, Donna, and Tom, fighting hour by hour and day by day through illness, cancer, medical emergencies, and declining health. We lift Roger as he moves to a home with more care for Parkinson's and dementia, and Loretta in hospice. Be with them and their loved ones during this time of transition. Hold Gabe, Jeff, Holly, the doctors and nurses tightly this week as Gabe undergoes surgery. We pray for a successful procedure and fast healing. We thank you for Nico finally getting to ring that bell and hope for joy bringing clear scans tomorrow. And be with the cast of Susical during Tech Week and thank you for the joy we find in the arts. Lay your healing and loving hands upon us and them. Restore them and keep them whole in body, mind, and spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. As we come to your table of grace at your invitation, we give thanks for this community where we are filled with joy each time we gather. Guard and lead this beautiful congregation that we might always walk in your ways. We lift our prayers in trust and thanksgiving, laying them at the feet of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. As we prepare to come to God's table, we hear these words. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. <clears throat> Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered together by the power of the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus teaches us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. For those communing on Zoom, the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. For those here in the sanctuary, you are invited to come forward to receive the wafer of bread and the cup of either red wine or white grape juice. Empty cups go in the baskets at the tops of the aisles. Uh, children are always invited to come forward for a blessing, and all are welcome at God's table.
And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. And let us pray. Holy God, you are a God of incredible abundance, and you fill us in this meal with your life. You fill us to overflowing, and you send us out from here to share your love with all the world. We ask that you would give us the courage and the strength and the joy to do so. We pray this in the name of the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able for our closing song. Alleluia, we sing your praises, number 535. Bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and give you grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you God's peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go as temples of God's glory to share the joy of Christ with all the world. Thanks be to God. One, two, three. One, two, three.